So what does the beam angle mean when you're looking at a red light therapy device? This is one of the most overlooked and underappreciated specifications in red light therapy products. And just by looking at the beam angle, you can tell a lot about the company and also the results that you're going to get. So in this video, we're gonna be discussing what the beam angle means, why we see so many different beam angles in the red light therapy industry. And I'm also gonna tell you what the best beam angle is for the benefit that you're trying to get. So to start, let's quickly discuss what the beam angle means. And I'm gonna bring my new whiteboard into the picture here. So this is the first video where I'm using the whiteboard. But to start, when you look at the beam angle, so let's say you have, this is a red LED. This is also the first time you're gonna see how badly I draw. When the light disperses from that LED, you can have the LED disperse that light at a different angle. This angle over here, that represents the beam angle. Now, typically you will see between 30 and even up to 120 degrees. So a 30 degree would be a narrower beam angle. So you're looking at something like that being 30 degrees and then 120, you're looking at a wider beam angle. Now, why does this matter? Well, there's benefits to both sides. When you have a tighter, let's use a red light therapy device over here. So when you have a tighter beam angle like this, this is the light leaving the device, then the light doesn't cover as much of a surface area, but the light intensity is stronger over a certain distance. If you had a wider beam angle, so now it's splaying out like this, then yes, it covers a larger surface area, but at the same distance away from the device, so let's say we're using six inches as the mark, the narrower beam angle over here is gonna have a higher light intensity. The one that splays out more, yes, it covers a larger surface area, but the light intensity will drop significantly as you get further away from the device. So there are two reasons why the beam angle is going to affect the results that you get. Now, the first one we already just discussed is light intensity, and you need to find the sweet spot. We need to have a beam angle that is wide enough that it covers a good surface area, but is not too wide that it drops the light intensity off too quickly. Now, this is where it gets very interesting. In the plant industry, they use LEDs to grow plants indoors, and this is actually where red light therapy technology originated. If you see a product with a very wide beam angle, there's a very high chance that that product is adapted from the plant industry where they've used these wide beam angles and the company hasn't looked at that specification. They've changed the wavelength, they've changed a couple of other things, but the beam angle often stays the same. And when you look at a red light therapy device, so let's say, again, I'm gonna draw another high class red light therapy device here. And I'm gonna draw you as a human standing over here. So when we look at a, let's say 30 degree beam angle that doesn't splay out that much, you can get a good coverage of a human body. When you have too much, so now we've got a, like a 90 degree beam angle coming out here, there is a lot of wastage. So all this that goes above your head and below is wasted. That would be great if you were You've got a whole bunch of plants that you're growing in the back here. I'm just using green. This isn't, doesn't even represent a plant. Let's give it a pot plant. Okay, yeah, it's, it's got a pot. But there's a whole bunch of plants that you're growing out here. You want to use as little lights as possible in this case so that you can cover the most amount of plants. Now, when you're targeting one specific human body, it doesn't really make sense to have this extreme wide beam angle because you're wasting a lot of the light energy. Now, there is a second factor, and this is extremely important to understand and why the beam angle will change the results that you get. And that has to do with the angle at which the light hits your skin. So let's use, here's a layer of skin. This is your outer layer, and this is all inside the human body. Now, the beam angle also changes the angle at which that is going to hit your skin. So let's say you went straight on. That's with zero. And we know that red light therapy will penetrate a couple of centimeters into your skin. So let's say it's two centimeters. So I'm gonna draw a line down here and let's say that this represents two centimeters straight down. Now, if you have a very wide beam angle, I'm just gonna use an extreme case over here. So we're going like this. And the incident, this is called the angle of incidence, is now much wider. That will now penetrate the same distance at an angle. Let's say that's representing two centimeters. And then when you look at the depth of penetration, there's a significant difference. This is all lost over here. 
So with the wider beam angle, even if they matched it and put a much higher light intensity into it, the beam angle means that that light is not going to penetrate as deeply. And this is fine, again, for plants. Plants absorb a lot of light on the outer tissues. But if you're using a red light therapy device for something like arthritis and you're looking for that deeper penetration, then the angle of incidence becomes extremely important and you wouldn't want something above 30 degrees. So to summarize this really quickly, when you're looking at the beam angle, it is going to affect the surface area covered. The wider it is, the more surface area covered. But that also means that the light intensity will drop off. Now, when you are targeting a human body, it makes a lot more sense to have a narrower beam angle. A, because we're not trying to waste too much light away from the body. And B, because it's going to affect the depth of penetration. And the deeper the depth of penetration, obviously the better benefits you're going to get. So all the MyLight products, they all use a 30 degree beam angle. So it's nice and narrow. The light intensity stays strong even at a distance. And it is going to have the highest depth of penetration, especially when you compare it to these 60, 90, even 120 degree beam angles. Now, I also suggest I've got another video where we speak about the different wavelengths that are used in red light therapy devices. And I'll leave a link to that up here. You can go and check that out and make sure that you learn everything you need to know about red light therapy products before going to buy one. If you want to check out some of the best red light therapy products on the market, then head to the description of this video and check out the MyLight range from Mychondria. If you have any questions from today's video, then please drop them in the comment section below. Otherwise, I hope that you have a great day further and we'll chat again soon. Cheers.